Before we begin today, I would like to acknowledge this land as the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. From the time of the conquest of New France in 1760, the British Crown recognized the inherent rights of the First Nations and their ownership of the lands they occupied. The Royal Proclamation of 1763 confirmed First Nations sovereignty over their lands and prevented anyone other than the Crown from purchasing that land. The Crown needed First Nations land for military purposes or for settlement, would first have to purchase it from its indigenous occupants. Toronto is also recognized as the treaty lands of many nations because for thousands of years, many different indigenous nations have made nation to nation agreements with each other regarding the sharing and protection of this land. Toronto is within the jurisdiction of the Dish with One Spoon Covenant, which you can see here in this image. The terms of this agreement were recorded by the making of this clamshell beaded belt called a wampum belt. This belt symbolizes a citizenship law that is over a thousand years old and requires the parties to the agreement to share the bowl representing the land and the animals and by using one spoon without a knife. In other words, to hunt, maintain land and animals and never let the dish become empty by exploiting these resources. The absence of a knife represented the agreement to share the resources in peace. This agreement was originally made between the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation to cover the land from the Great Lakes to Quebec and from Lake Simcoe to the U.S. These terms were agreed to in a sacred ceremony. Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed in 1805 between the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the Crown. In 1923, Canada and seven Mississauga and Chippewa First Nations signed agreements that became known as the Williams Treaties. These agreements were intended to be the foundation upon which sovereign peoples would build a common relationship. However, these Treaty First Nations have had long-standing disputes with the government about honoring the terms of the agreement regarding compensation, settlement, and harvesting. It is important to recognize these Indigenous nations for their care for and teaching about the earth and our relations, as well to honor those teachings through our actions today and every day hereafter. Toronto is now home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. In the light of this history and understanding the role that all of us have to play as treaty people, may we dedicate ourselves to moving forward in the spirit of partnership, collaboration and reconciliation as we learn together and contemplate the possibilities that lay ahead.